so hello and welcome everyone i hope you all are safe and sound and continue to be at home and be safe so for today we have an interesting lesson um this is the first lesson from our supplementary book it so happened um and i think this title would be quite familiar for some of us as we would have read this in our childhood days so this let's just see what a short introduction about the story so the story how the camel got his hump is a story from rudyard kipling's collection called just so stories the story is set in arabia when the world was new and camels did not have humps so the author tells us about the time when man was just beginning to learn the art of domesticating animals and uh, there was a camel that lived in the middle of a desert and how it was it did not do any work and how it was uh, how it got the ump that is a main theme behind the story how this lazy camel got its hump so let's get started with this lesson so before we move into the lesson let's just get a bit familiar with the author Rudyard Kipling so he was born on 30th December 1865 and he was a short story writer a novelist poet and a journalist he was born in mumbai india he was educated in england and he returned to india in the year 1882 and just so stories if and the jungle book are some of his famous um scripts and in the year 1907 he won his nobel prize in literature and he left the earth in the year 8, 1936 jan 18th so that's about the author so let's see the characters in this lesson the camel um the camel is a um, important character in this lesson as we saw uh, the entire story is based on this camel and next we see a dog and then the horse where the horse would come in as a camel to do work so the horse is also part of the that's it and then we have the ox and the man who is domesticating all these animals is a man who is taming these animals and then we have the jinn so this is a jinn uh, and he is the one who gets complained you know he is the one to whom these animals go and complain to so let me just tell you uh, just a what the story actually tells us so the story how the camel got its hump is a fable a uh, uh, fable is um, a story that involves animals as their character so this story how the camel got its hump is a fable written by rudyard uh, rudyard kipling and the story is about the time when animals had just started working for man and however while the other animals worked the camel would just lay around in the desert refusing to do any work and all he would say was humph when the animals asked him to do work and finally a genie took uh, matters into his hand and asked him why he wouldn't work and so the camel again a third hump the genie then did some magic and as the camel said hump there emerged a bump on his beautiful back the genie said that now with the hump the camel could work tirelessly for days and said that the hump was a reminder to him of the days when he refused to work so this is just a short just about the story um 
let's read the lesson and understand what this lesson is about. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of a howling desert, because he did not want to work, and besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles, most scruciating idol, and when anybody spoke to him, he just said, Humph! Just humph! And no more. Presently the horse came to him on Monday morning, with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth, and said, Camel, oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the horse went away and told the man. Presently the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the dog went away and told the man. Presently the ox came to him with the yoke on his neck, and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together, and said, Three, O oh three, I'm very sorry for you, with the world so new and all, but that humph thing in the desert can't work or he would have been here by now. So I am going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry, with the world so new and all, and they held a palaver, and an indaba, and a panchayat, and a powwow on the edge of the desert, and the camel came chewing on milkweed most scruciating idle, and laughed at them. Then he said, Humph! and went away again. Presently there came along the jinn in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Jinns always travel that way because it is magic. And he stopped to palaver and powwow with the three. Jinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the jinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert, and he's a howler himself, with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. <sighs> said the jinn, whistling. That's my camel for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He says, Humph, said the dog and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only humph, and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the jinn. I'll humph him, if you will kindly wait a minute. The jinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak, and took a bearing across the desert, and found the camel most scruciatingly idle, looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My long and bubbling friend, said the jinn, what's this I hear of your doing no work, with the world so new and all? Humph, said the camel. The jinn sat down, with his chin in his hand, and began to think a great magic, while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning. All on account of your scruciating idleness, said the jinn, and he went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. Humph, said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the jinn. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. And the camel said, Humph, again. But no sooner had he said it than he saw his back that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great big lolloping humph. Do you see that? said the jinn. That's your very own humph that you've brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday, 
when the work began. Now you are going to work. How can I, said the camel, with this humph on my back? That's made a purpose, said the djinn, all because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating, because you can live on your humph. And don't you ever say I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to the three and behave. Humph yourself. And the camel humphed himself, humph and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a humph. We call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world. And he has never yet learned how to behave.